Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day so far and thanks so much for joining me for another art video. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing the watercolor painting process for a jar of hard, colorful candy. This is a piece I worked on this week as I really wanted to upload something new onto my Etsy shop. And so this original painting as well as print versions of this painting are going to be available very soon. I am super happy to say that I have found a way through which I'm going to be able to make prints of my work available as well as stickers along with my original. So yeah, I'm super happy and excited. And I'll definitely be sharing more on that later. And real quick, before I actually get into talking a bit about my painting process for this piece, I just want to welcome all you new people just visiting my channel today for the very first time. Welcome, welcome. I am super happy you found me. Consider subscribing because every single Friday, I share a new video with art tips, drawing and painting tutorials, and encouragement for aspiring artists. I also have a blog over at ericalancaster.com through which I offer a ton of helpful and free resources for aspiring artists that are serious about making their art a priority and really want to improve their drawing and painting skills. But for now, I want to talk a little bit about this watercolor piece that I've created. I had lots of fun with it, as many of you probably already know. You know that I love painting food with watercolor, so I really enjoyed this one. This is also quite a bit more detailed than most of the food watercolor paintings that I've been creating lately, and it really did take me quite a bit longer than others. In terms of the supplies that I used to create this piece, I used Arches Hot Press 140 pound watercolor paper. I used my Winsor Newton Cotman Line pans. And of course, my Royal and Langnickel Zen brushes. The links to all of these different watercolor painting supplies will be left for you down below in the description box in case you're interested in checking them out for yourself. For this painting, I really did use quite a bit more colors than I would normally use for a painting, just because there were so many different candies and so many different colors. And of course, I could have created my secondary colors, my orange, purples, and greens, by mixing together my primaries, so my reds, yellows, and blues. However, I really like creating my paint mixtures as I go. And because there are so many different colors in this piece, I would have needed a lot of space in my paint mixing palette that I didn't have. And so this is why I decided to just go for the ready-made colors in the pans. This said, I did make sure to test out my different reds, my different purples, my different blues on a couple of scrap pieces of watercolor paper prior to starting with my painting process so that I could select the specific pigments that I would be using from my Winsor Newton paint set and I then removed these little specific pans from my set because in the beginning when I was first getting started with watercolor it used to happen to me all the time that I accidentally dip my paintbrush bristles in a pigment that I wasn't intending to use. And then I created these color mixtures that I really wasn't planning for. And this is exactly why you see me uh, use these little individual pans kind of separate from my actual watercolor paint set. And I also have to say that I did use a bit of Chinese white for this one, which is a color that I don't normally use when I'm painting with watercolor. However, I didn't attempt to use my Chinese white to create highlights or anything of the sort. I actually kept my highlights protected throughout the entire painting process so that my watercolor paper could shine through. But I added a little bit of that white to create a specific candy color that I was able to see in my reference picture because in my reference picture I could tell that there were three different yellowish colors. One was a kind of lemon yellow with a tiny bit of green in it. The other one was kind of a cadmium yellow, a regular bright yellow. And the other one was more of a beigeish, goldish color. And that's the one that I used a tiny bit of white for. 
I painted my background wet on wet effects using a mixture of Payne's Grey and Cerulean Blue. And of course, as you can see, the areas of cast shadow beneath the two candies outside of the jar as well as beneath the jar are the areas that really the color ratio contained a lot more Payne's Grey than Cerulean Blue. And in the upper areas, the paint mixture contained a lot more Cerulean Blue than Payne's Grey. Now I am using a mixture of many different techniques that I have explained in the past to create this painting. First and foremost, I always make sure to start with the lightest, most translucent value of whatever color it is I am painting. I start with a very light wash. And then I start building up um, towards darker values as I go in layers. In past watercolor tips or tutorials videos, I have already shared how important it is to allow a previous layer of paint to dry before going back in and attempting to darken areas when it comes to watercolor. And this is what you see me do here. I start developing the first layer and all of the little pieces of candy. And then I go back in after I have created that first layer of paint in all of them. And I go back in and darken areas that have to be darkened. Now, even though a painting like this is very time consuming because of all of the different little parts, you have to work on so many little parts that of course the previous ones will have dried by that point and that's a good thing right because then you go back into those you have so many places to jump off from and to i guess is what i'm trying to say and also something that you can probably see by this point is all of the little tiny white spaces and highlights that I am saving in pretty much every single piece of candy, okay? And this is very important with something like this because the candy has to be shiny and it has to have this kind of translucent effect, right? And if I didn't make, make it a point to protect those highlights, then those colors would be very flat. Throughout this painting, I did for the most part stick to using only one specific pigment for the candies. So for other paintings, I actually mix in a second or even a third color once I am creating those deeper, darker values. But for these candy pieces, I pretty much used only one same pigment. And really, I think that the only pieces of candy that are actually two colors combined are the green candies and the candies that I was mentioning before that included a little bit of Chinese white. And so yeah, for the most part within the candies, I used only one specific pigment for the pink candies, one specific pigment for the yellow candies, one specific pigment for the red candies, etc. But the first, most uh, lightest and most translucent versions of that color were created with a paint mixture that had a lot more water in it and so the color was a lot more translucent. And as I started developing those deeper, darker values, I just used a more heavily saturated paint mixture with less water in it. And this is something that I go much more into depth in my water control video which I'm gonna make sure to leave a link to down below in the description box. I highly, highly recommend you go and check it out if you're just getting started with watercolor because really understanding paint to water ratios and how to move on throughout the watercolor painting process, uh, shifting these ratios around and making sure that you are keeping an eye on the amount of water in your paintbrush bristles, in your paint mixtures, as well as on your paper is super important and something that you should definitely practice as someone just starting out. You can see me absorb some excess water off from my paper using my blue absorbent towel every now and then. Um, having an absorbent towel, whether it be something like my blue Scott shop towels that I buy through Amazon or even regular kitchen paper towels in my opinion are super essential to have. I cannot start a watercolor painting without them because 
They are so handy when it comes to water control and kind of avoiding unwanted effects. So a minute ago, I don't know if you noticed, but I added a little bit of my purple color, my purple pigment that I selected, which is called mauve. I added a wash of that purple into my area of cast shadow. And the reason why I did this is because I really wanted to play with color a bit in my negative area outside of the candy jar. And I also felt it would be a good way to further integrate my candy jar into the negative area around it. Okay, and finally, before leaving you with the rest of this time lapse, I just want to talk a little bit about how I painted the glass effect for this piece. So, as you can probably tell by now, I am doing nothing but, I guess you could say they are lines with variation in them, in terms of both uh, thickness and darkness and color, but if you remember, if you recall, the very first color that I used for these lines was the same color that I used to paint the background and the cast shadow below the candy jar with. It was the same mixture of cerulean blue with Payne's gray that I started uh, adding into these glass areas, pretty much. Now, since the beginning, I'm being very, very careful to leave my areas of highlights that I am able to perceive in my reference picture within these glass areas. I am not worrying too much and being super obsessive about making my highlight areas exactly in the same size and location as I see them in my reference picture. Um, it is not my intention to create a, an exact replica of my reference image. I'm just using it as something to base my painting off of. And I even changed the background color of my reference image completely. In my image, the background is actually wood, and you're able to see the brown uh, colors from the wood through cer certain areas of the glass. And so I used the same principle uh, when I changed the color of my background. So I made my background in a grayish bluish color, so I made sure that I'm able to see the color of the background through certain areas of my glass because, well, glass is transparent, right? And because of this, because of this transparency, it would be a little bit weird if we didn't at least see a little bit of the background color in certain areas of the glass. And so I made sure to integrate it into certain areas to make it look a lot more believable. Now, even within the little lines and little areas of washes that I create in my glass sections, you could tell that I started with very light translucent washes and as the painting process moves forward, I get darker and darker even with my lines that I am placing in these areas. Um, and another quality of glass, of course, is that it's reflective. And so I am making sure that I am able to perceive at least a little bit of every single one of the colors that I use, or at least most of the colors that I use for my candies um, in certain areas of my glass. This is something that I was able to tell in my reference picture. There were certain tiny spaces of reds and certain tiny reflections of purples and yellows, etc. And I feel that it was a really beautiful way of integrating everything and making everything a little bit more playful and colorful. And yeah, that's why I decided to add in those tinges of the different colors that I use for the candies within the glass. As you see me move forward with the glass, you're going to see me get darker and darker and the glass is really going to pop out more and more. And also, I don't know if you can tell by this point, but there is a section that looks almost like a trapezoid, uh, I don't know, modified trapezoid near the belly of the candy jar, which is basically a reflection of light. Slowly but surely, it's starting to pop out more and more as I start to develop the darker values around it, and that's basically how I created that effect. 
Inside of that rhombus, I just added very, very light translucent versions of color, making sure to leave some areas completely free of pigment. And then I am just staying away from that area, that weird rhombus shape, and only developing the darker mid-tones and darker darks around the rhombus. And that is how that reflection effect is popping out more and more. By this point, I'm just going back in and darkening areas that I feel have to be darkened more and perhaps working on developing smoother transitions from one value to the next. Because watercolors tend to dry lighter than how they look when they're wet, and I really love contrasting color in my work. I, this is something I almost always do. I go back and add in darker values in certain areas and really like making my painting pop. I'm going to leave you now to enjoy the final section of this time lapse. All right, everyone, that is it for today. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you got something from this. Let me know in the comment section below what your favorite type of candy is. And if you haven't participated in my first ever international giveaway over on Instagram, please don't forget to hop on over and participate. It's super easy and it's closing this Sunday, June 23rd. You can find my Instagram handle right here on the screen and also a direct link to it down below in the description box. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up because it really helps my channel get in front of more people. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really appreciate you and see you next Friday. Bye!